You're listening to Radio Kidnap, it's the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a programme called... The Wonderful World of Wardini Books. And here we are, the wonderful <laughs> from Wardini Books and Havelock North, sitting live in the studio. Good to see you again. I'm alive. Yes, you Just are Just about. Alive. Yes, you, yeah. you had a, a book launch last night. We'll talk about that a bit later on, but mm. uh, very successful, I do believe. Brilliant. Yeah, yes. really good night. Okay, three fabulous books to look at again this week. Two of them are Kiwi, which is great. And the first one, though, not the Kiwi one, it's The Courage to be Disliked. The Courage to be Disliked. So this is the Japanese phenomenon num, 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 yes, indeed, that, that shows you how to free yourself, change your life and achieve real happiness, Ken. Ooh, yeah, I must read it. <laughs> yes. It's by Ichiro Kishimi and Fumitaki Koga. And um, I don't often read books like this because they tend to say the same thing, don't they, some yes, of they them? Yes, they do. Yes. But this one, it's the title, The Courage to be Disliked, because who wants to be disliked? Nobody. No one. And it's such a human thing and we end up doing things and saying things just to please other people yes, exactly and I think okay well I have a, I have a very full life and I come into contact with so many people all the time how do you manage that yes. whilst keeping yourself safe you know in 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 all sorts of ways so I thought I'll get I'll just start reading it and see what happens and it's in the form of a conversation between a philosopher who is a scholar of Adlerian psychology, the psych I think a German psychologist back in the day called Adler. Mm. And he's quite um, not Freudian, not Jungian, you know. Mm. And um, the Japanese scholar philosopher is talking to uh, a student about the, the philosophy of this psychology. And it's quite quite fun because the young student just challenges everything and goes well that can't be right and no you're completely wrong and I'm going to blow your theory out of the water so it's quite interesting from that point of view but Adlerian psychology is is based the, the basic tenet I'm going to be really basic now and if anybody yes, knows I, more about this goodness. than me that's fine <laughs> um, it's you are in control of your life so if I say something to you and you react to it that's your problem sure I know we have to think, of course we have to think about perspective, and I would never say anything to deliberately be rude or hurtful to you, Ken. No, of course not. But if I say something and you take it like this, then that's your issue. So it is really about um, sorting your own shizzle out. Yeah. <laughs> so is, this, is that the sort of book that's giving you license to say how you feel about everything? Yes, yeah, Without suppose having so. to worry about what anyone else thinks. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, there are always caveats to that because, you yes. know. It does talk about people being complete yeah, nitwits, you and can, you know, yeah. it's not about being an a-hole to no. anybody else. Yeah. Um, I, I put little, you know, I thought I, I need to read it again because I started putting my little sticky notes in it, and then I just got consumed by it and didn't put any sticky notes in it. So I was quite interested this morning to see what I've put on my sticky notes. And the first one on this page is, your life is not something that someone gives you choose yes that's, that's good i like that it's got controversial attitudes towards trauma as well mm -hmm. in that you don't have to you don't have to think about that that doesn't have to define you no um and a lot of people might disagree with that and say you know this is part of me of course it's part of you but yes. you know you don't have to let it define you you're only unable to change because you are making the decision not to mm. That's an interesting one, I'm trying to read Very my own relevant. handwriting. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one that I bookmarked before I got distracted by things. My life is determined at this exact point, so whatever has happened previously is yeah. irrelevant. I wonder yeah. though, and we could probably have a program for, for an hour on uh, what I'm about to say to you, that uh, you know, we, we have got quite a lot of shows that deal with uh, mental health and uh, we talk to psychologists. And for instance, reading that book and listening to some of the psychologists, what they say, it sounds so easy. And you know, reading that in black and white, you think, well, of course, I can easily do that. But translating it into action is a completely different thing. So when you yeah. finished that book, did you find that, hey, I could do that? I have actually put a couple of things into practice. I think, because uh, I'm a dreadful overthinker. Mm. So, you know, if you can think, okay, well, I've done my best to explain myself mm. to, in this situation. That's all I can do now. Yeah. You know, and, and relax about it and go, okay, well, that, if that person doesn't like me because of that, all right. Yeah, that's, that's their problem. You're quite <laughs> yeah. Right. Do you find it easy to say no now? Yeah, yeah. I've had to be. Or yeah. I'm still not brilliant at it. But I, I, over the years, and especially in the job that I have now, you do have to. Otherwise, yeah. you just get consumed by yeah, other do. people's wants. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. Can you bring me a fruitcake next week? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good on you. I love that. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> now we've got a couple of Kiwi books we're going to talk about, and the first one is called Cold Wallet. Tell us about yeah. that. Have you heard of the phrase Cold Wallet? No. Cold Wallets and Hot Wallets. No. What is it like? Full of, full of money and empty. Well, it's to do with cryptocurrency, so mm, your right. Bitcoin, mm. that yeah. kind of thing. So this is this is a novel. It's by Rosie Fennick, who is a New Zealand author, and um, she deals with the relationship between Andrew and Jess. So Jess is a doctor. She's got a, a cool backstory, interesting backstory of her own. She had to look after her mother, who was suffering from a degenerative disease, and her mother died. Mm -hmm. And something happened when she was only sixteen. And then she was in and out of foster homes, um, but she eventually becomes a doctor she a life's on track and she meets andrew who's a businessman and he's he deals in cryptocurrency you know and jess knows nothing mm. about this at this point but she's a smart cookie and she catches on pretty quickly um so they have you know a couple of bumps in their whirlwind romance but they get married mm. and they off they go um on holiday to some beautiful um pacific island and the, the andrew who's so rich he's kind of booked out the whole island for them but he has um, a condition. It's sort of like a. It's more than an irritable bowel. Yep. It's like a really terrible, you know, bowel condition, mm -hmm. which is unusual, <laughs> unromantic. <laughs> yes, can't wait to hear more about this one. <laughs> well, he dies. He has a terrible, no, yeah. terrible incident on yeah. holiday that is explained in some medical detail. Mm. You're like, wow, I've never read this before. And he dies, um, and Jess is just devastated, and off she goes back to um, New Zealand, because it's all set in and around Auckland, and um, has to deal with Andrew's very jealous business partner, who everything was going fine until Jess came on the scene, and now Andrew's dead, mm. and now this, and it's all gone up the wop. Um, but then turns out that the keys, which are, everything's digital, so it's all kind of made up and not real, mm. but the keys to all these investments, Andrew changed all the passcodes oh, before wow. he went on holiday. Nobody no knows what they knows are. No, so all the money, all this imaginary digital Bitcoin is just gone. You know, and all the investors are up the WAP. Yeah. And Jess, and he's left the whole company to Jess, so <laughs> she doesn't really know much about it. Exactly. And she's like, wow. And as we go through, it becomes more intriguing and more intriguing. And I've, I've, I would like to say I've learned a lot about Bitcoin, and I have. I can't say that I still understand it, mm. because it's quite a oh, kind of uh, mind-blowingly um, theoretical concept, yeah. really, isn't it? So it was just, it was really fast-paced. You don't know who to trust. Jess has got this backstory going on. Is she a trustworthy person? Is um, Henry, who's the business partner, we know he's a wrong one quite early on because you get his first person narrative and then you get rest of its third person about, about Jess and what's going on there. Um, police investigations into what's gone off with it. Police investigation into the death. Was that dodgy? Um, yeah, so just twists mm. and turns and intrigue all the way through and really nicely written, I have to say. Um, you know, big round of applause for Rosie Fennec. Lots of plots does it come together nicely at the end? Yeah. Yeah. It really does. All sorted? Yeah. We don't want a spoiler. No, no. you could so easily <laughs> say one tiny thing and it would spoil everything. Yeah. But no, you'll find out. Follow the clues. Indeed. Now, you had a book launch at Wardini Books in Havelock North last night for a, a book called Displaced. What a cool cover. It's, it's first thing everybody cover. says about this book. Yeah, I so love it. Christina Sanders lives in Havelock North, and this book has already won an award even mm. before it was published. Wow. So um, the Storylines Trust uh, has something for a young adult award for an unpublished manuscript called the Tessa Duda mm. Award. And Christina submitted her unpublished manuscript, and she won. Right. And um, this is set... It starts off in Cornwall, and there's a young woman called Eloise, and she and her family have got to leave Cornwall. Um, the farm's gone up the wop, and Uncle in New Zealand says, come over here and work for me. And they're kind of... He's got them over a barrel because he owned the farm mm. in, the, in the UK. And so he says, come over here, and, and I'll, I'll give you work. And so they go on this god awful sea journey because it's in the 1800s on this ship you know and they're they're fairly well off so they're above yeah. in the cabins but you've got all these people below that can't afford to the nice mm. cabins and you've got all these this norwegian community that's also down there and so eloise meets a young man called lars on the ship you know and there's a little bit of they're quite young yes. but there's a bit of flirting yeah. and they obviously got a bit Romance. of an eye for each other um but they they lose touch um a member of the family dies on the ship um, you know, and this is before they've even got to New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> and then they pitch up and they go and try and find un Uncle in Napier. 
and he's nowhere to be found and they're all you know gosh what's going on and then the father of the family who's not a nice bloke has to go off and try and and set up some business um and the one of the younger sisters is the way that christina's described her you probably say these days oh she's kind of on the autism spectrum mm. but that wouldn't have been relevant in the 1800s to use that kind of language so she's quite happy in her own little world yeah. she strikes up a bit of a friendship with a, a, a local lad and seems quite content and happy and starts to get a bit fat and like whoops <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's going on there <laughs> yeah so um there's all sorts of issues in here that are dealt with really really well and you know discussed and there's sort of the interracial things between these white immigrants coming in from the UK and from Norway and um, clearing land out in mm. Norsewood so we go down to yeah. sort of Norsewood Danivuk um, area as well and um, yeah just how hard it was just to be displaced like that and to try and build a life from absolutely nothing but it was and now uh, it's, a, it's yeah. a novel but it's a historical novel as yeah. well is it historically accurate i mean will we recognize facts or, or not i think you would yeah, yeah. and yeah. it gives you a really good um insight into what napier would have been like when it was a young city you know post colonization mm. and um yeah you, you know we know a bit i think most of us about the local history of norsewood danivirk mm. and how the norwegians and scandinavians came through and they had that you know they thought they were going to have farmland yeah but it was just pure native yeah, bush and they had to chop everything down to even find a space to put their tent up in you know it was really hard those were the days eh? those were the days i'm glad it wasn't me who's going to read that book is it, is it like a love story there is a love story in it. It's much more than a love story. So it is a beautifully researched historical novel for anybody over the age of 14. Mm. You know, anybody. Yeah. So it's, it's marketed as a young adult novel, mm. but perfectly wonderful for any grown-ups to read too. Awesome. Yeah. Now, if we want any of these fabulous books, where do we get them? Wardini Books would be my first choice for people to come to. 16 Tomato Road, Havelock North, 44 Hastings Street in Napier. Good on you, Lou. As always, my pleasure. You look after yourself. We'll talk to the same time, same place next week. Thanks, Kim.